Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is David, and I'll let him introduce himself for you. Uh, hey guys, um, I'm David Yard. Um, where to begin, really and truly? I do so much. Uh, so during the day, uh, my wife and I, we run a branding firm. Um, during whatever free time I have, I do a lot of community organizing. Uh, we have a user experience meetup group. Uh, we help co-organize a WordPress meetup group. Um, and then I have a couple online projects, uh, my biggest of which is the Always Upward project, um, where I tend to share articles, whether it's on my website or Medium, um, and then also different bits and graphics and videos on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, so yeah, I've been a creative now for 16 years. So it's been a while, started in middle school, so it's been a pretty fun journey. Um, can't really imagine doing anything else. That sounds amazing. Um, but straight away, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was, you know, you do so much. Um, how, how did this all start? Uh, so it started when I was homeschooled during like middle school and elementary. Um, and I found a passion for just creating things. Um, this was back before we had, the, you know, the joy of like tutorials and YouTube. Um, you literally, like if you wanted to build a website, you had to go to that website um, and then kind of like look at the source code and then pull it apart and then try to make your own version. Um, and then the site was around called, I think, CSS Zen Garden. Um, and that really married my love for designing things in like Photoshop. Um, um, and then being able to make them interactive. Um, and so that whole journey, you know, I ended up meeting my wife during that time. Um, and, you know, we were dating and we both enjoyed design and development. So it was like a really, really good like mix then. Um, but then later on, uh, you know, I worked for different advertising agencies, other companies. And the one thing that I saw and how we ended up starting Sevenality was um, a lot of companies were faced with a lot of huge decisions. How do I, you know, move over to being more creative and more, you know, uh, innovative, I guess you can say was a buzzword at the time. Um, and not a lot of them really had the resources necessary to get that job done. So we decided, hey, how can we use, you know, our love for design and business, which is, you know, a nice intersection of things, and help uh, business owners get stuff done. And so that's how Sevenality was born. Um, but every creative needs an outlet. And so I... Whenever we visit cities for speaking engagements, I like to take a little bit of time and just walk around the city, take pictures of the different buildings, different things that are unique to that area, uh, and share them on Instagram, and share them with a little quote and the hashtag always upward. Um, it's usually something, whether you're dealing with regrets, whether you're dealing with you know moving forward in business or personal development, something that you can keep your aim always upward. Um, and then on the same side of that, for me, um, due to my religious upbringing, a lot of that kind of still remained, not everything, but a good portion of it. Um, and for me personally, it was resonating about keeping my eyes focused on God, um, regardless of, you know, the situation that I'd be going through. Um, so all of that kind of mixed around one central idea of just creating more good. Um, and so it's really easy to be able to move between the different pieces. Um, of course, work takes primary focus, but everything else kind of, you know, fills in the gaps uh, along that mission. Wow, that's such an interesting journey. And it's, I'm a creative as well, and I've met so many creative people along my journey. And it seems as though all of us are drawn to something that is, is like you said, every creative needs an outlet. Um, what is it for you about taking pictures, uh, whether it be for fun or for work, that f that you feel that there is an outlet in that? Hmm, wow. Uh, so for photography and like mixing that and doing like video, um, I find that it's a nice way to still be, um, be okay with being an introvert. And then at the same time, being able to capture whether it's a moment or a story that's unfolding, uh, you know, if it's an event, there's a lot of things that are happening across that event or 
Um, something simple, even like in a portrait session, people tend to change as they get more comfortable with you, more comfortable with the idea, expressing themselves. And so being able to really capture that in a way that each time you see it, it brings back that positive emotion, um, I think is that thing that really does it for me. That's so interesting. Um, there's so many aspects of creativity that I, I really enjoy, but hearing it from other people gives me a different way of looking at it. So I, d I can definitely resonate with the introvert part. Uh, holding a camera is an easy way to, for me to connect with what's going on. Um, so you mentioned your company, Sevenality. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you do in that company? So Sevenality is a full service uh, brand strategy and creative services agency. So we pretty much help everyone who just has an idea, whether it's on the back of a napkin or a little bit more complex in the form of a business plan, uh, be able to bring that idea to market um, or improve upon a current idea or brand or service. And so we take a full look at you know the employees, the vendors, uh, their mission, why they originally started it, you know the dreams that they may have had for that company um, and really provide like a very comprehensive roadmap to say well we're going to start with uh, if it's an internal company issue we're going to get everyone on the same page so stakeholders employees owners everyone um, if it's a little bit you know more simple where they just need a website or identity done then we'll kind of go through and make sure we research different styles different things so it's a very unique experience to them and then help them over the course of that project to you know pull all those pieces together um, so we pretty much handle everything from website development, you know, identity. Um, we have partners that we work with to do more of the legal aspect of trademarking and things like that. Um, app development. Um, also experiential branding where you're really taking that intangible experience and making it more of an offline experience. Um, so that's really, really great, especially for like food brands or even some tech brands as well. So it's a really, really nice uh nice thing to be doing um, it has its tough days of course with anything um, but yeah it's one of those that I'm glad I made that choice um, and really have been you know humbled by a lot of the projects that we've worked on that sounds so great and you know in in doing this journey of something that you you're pursuing something that you're passionate about what has been the most difficult thing for you hmm so I think a lot of it, I would break it down to maybe two or three areas. So the first one is personal confidence. Um, that has definitely been, you know, the biggest thing. And a lot of that, you know, stems from whether it's like, you know, some days you battle with depression. Um, some days it's just a matter of, you know, residual stuff from your past where, you know, a thought may hit you and you may have a regret. Um, so overcoming those things and really keeping your eye, you know, on the goal that you're really aiming to achieve um, has been that biggest thing uh, that I've found. Um, but then as I, you know, dig deeper within that, I found that a lot of it really had to do with probably not wanting to fail the people that I care about the most. Um, and it could be, you know, my wife or, you know, my daughter. Um, those are the people that mean the most to me in that essence. And then, you know, everything else is kind of like, okay, well, you're not immediately within that circle. So... I'm not going to be as stressed about it, um, but I still love and care for you, but I really want to make sure that my family is okay. Um, so battling with that and saying, you know, um, going through the transition of bad jobs where, you know, your personal, I guess, confidence, your self-esteem takes a hammering um, and then different relationships throughout life, um, those things, you know, it's very, very important, I guess, the way in which I found to be able to deal with that is to really work through your personal development. Um, as a business owner, I found that your business grows when you grow. Um, so if you believe that you know it all, that you're the best at everything, then chances are that same mindset is going to carry over into your business. Um, and so it's the same thing with how you treat your you know, staff. A lot of people, a lot of companies that we find that the employees love working there, it's because the owners take the time to treat them like human beings. Um, and then the ones that wonder why, you know, sales aren't really growing or um, people aren't resonating with their message, it's because that internal characteristic, that personal brand is leaking into that business brand. 
Um, and so it could be a matter of, you know, personal confidence for a lot of people and then they overcompensate. But then that has an impact on, you know, you and me later on. Um, so that would be the biggest thing I would say, you know, overcoming um, would be, you know, the personal confidence and then the depression. Um, but then creative outlets that has been, you know, a really huge, huge help. Um, the people that I have around me, you know, the community within the community um, that has been pretty helpful, too. Um, and yeah, and just utilizing the full range of, you know, creativity, whether it's writing, um, sometimes I, you know, will just throw the radio on or Spotify or other and just jam out and dance or something. Um, so it's, you know, taking your mind off things. Um, oh, volunteering has been a really, really huge thing. Stepping outside your perspective and finding another one. Yep. That's great. Can we um, go with that a second? What, what uh, volunteer work have you been doing? So over the years, I've volunteered pretty much everywhere from, you know, the American Red Cross to local churches. Um, and then, of course, doing a lot more community things now. Um, really anywhere that, you know, kind of is interesting and I, you know, have the time that I really can like dedicate and go all in on it. Um, there's also a local organization here called Give Kids the World, um, which I used to volunteer at quite frequently, but, you know, try to help and support from however best possible now. Um, so, yeah, a lot of my time lately with volunteer work has been at my local church uh, where I help with the youth group there. And so that's been a pretty fun um, journey, just kind of learning to see what that next generation or those after you are kind of thinking um, and how you can best be able to help as well. Wow, that sounds so amazing. And there's something I think for me when I have volunteered in the past, that change in perspective that you have when you see something from a, something else outside of you and you appreciate what you have and what this person is needing and being able to provide that for them, I think is, is so powerful in helping to shift perspectives. Um, you mentioned before about personal development and um, I'm all about that. That's, that's like my drug these days. Um, what was it that got you into personal development? Uh, I don't know. It was just, I think, something that's been instilled in me as a kid. Um, my mom was pretty big on that. Uh, my dad was pretty big on it as well. Um, and so it's just that habit that stuck with me. I always felt like... I was competing against myself in most cases, um, and I wanted to be better than I was the day before. Um, I wanted to be better than, you know, that last thing. So it was kind of, I guess, a weird way of when people give me um, compliments and things like, oh, you did really, really well. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I have to do better next time. So it's like that mindset. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, later on in life, um, Batman has been kind of like my thing, and he's always like, you know, one step ahead. And so that mindset kind of puts into everything um, that I really, really do. Yeah. That's interesting that you mentioned Batman. What, what is it that inspires you about him in particular? Well, um, the stand for justice, really and truly, um, in doing what's, you know, necessary in right. Um, the recent iterations have been a little bit strange, um, you know, with Batman using guns. If you kind of go back, that's not really like his thing. Um, but really and truly just like being able to use different things around you, um, preparation, uh, consistency, always showing up, even if there's nothing going on that day. Um, those things kind of really resonated. And it was the first movie that like my dad took me to see. So it's like... It has that emotional connection too. Yeah, I I see um, Batman's more relatable than any and the other ones I know because I think if anyone was rich enough, they could probably be Batman, right? <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, and I feel like it's the only like superhero that doesn't need a superpower, I guess, to really make a difference. And so it's a lot more, you know, human. Like, oh, if I actually took five minutes and thought about what do I have available? Maybe I could defeat this problem kind of a thing. So, yeah. That's, a, that's an approach that I haven't thought about before. Next time I have a problem, I'm going to think Batman and see what I have around me to, to solve it. So um, we've touched on a few different things here, but a lot of what I saw online with your online presence was um, the personal development aspects and also combining the creativity and sending that positive message out 
Um, do you do this in your community organization as well? I do. Um, I found that for me, uh, a lot of the leadership positions that I've been put in, um, I don't like to use that conventional, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that kind of approach. Um, and also, it doesn't really bear well with me being an introvert in many cases. So as long as I, you know, get to know it, and I think there's a book by Simon Sinek, Leaders, uh, Real e Leaders Eat Last, or Leaders Eat Last, uh, yeah, that's what it was. Um, or he's talking about, you know, leading from behind instead of like charging forward and taking all the praise um, and, you know, making sure that the people that you're working with are well taken care of. Um, that's the approach that I like to utilize. And so it really, really helps when uh, a problem comes down and, you know, the usual approach is to throw blame around. You'll be like, well, instead of doing that, let's take a look back and say, well, where did we fail? Uh, what could we do better the next time and who wants to take you know ownership of that particular thing and I find that it builds a lot more trust um, people are a lot more willing to fail because there's a way to work through it failure is not the end um, and I think that you know if a lot more leaders really shared that mindset with their teams you know people could produce some really amazing work David you've mentioned being an introvert a few times and I can definitely relate um, it is a difficult thing to be able to lead or have your own business or have employees or have people that you work with and also be of that nature. Um, can you give us some tips? Because I know I'll definitely benefit from it. So it's a lot about balance for me. Um, I have, you know, the periods where I will not talk to anybody. Um, and so I really try to structure my schedule and my day to day to really accommodate that. So if it's waking up a little bit earlier to get those extra two hours into myself, then I'll do that. Um, you know, things that I've also found are really helpful. Um, approaching it of making more friends, I guess, because if I find people that resonate on that same wavelength that I do, it's not really like I feel drained after that experience. I feel a lot more uplifted and excited and energetic. And so I try to, you know, if I'm going to be interacting with tons and tons of people, then I try to have, you know, a nice sprinkling in of that kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, creative outlets that really help you to, you know, just relax a little bit. A lot of it is that pent up stress that you're holding on to. Um, sometimes I'll do yoga. Um, sometimes it's, you know, running if it's not too hot outside. Uh, lately, I've been biking a lot. Um, and so exercise I found to be pretty helpful and, you know, getting, I think it's really a matter of like energy sometimes where some people really drain you or you get anxious about it. And so if that energy is kind of redirected somewhere else, your mind's a little bit more open to the moment that you're in, um, especially if you're looking at it from the point of here's an experience that I haven't had before. Um, how can I really learn something from this experience? Um, you know, as introverts, we're a lot more observers, I guess to say. And so if we can observe and then share that story, um, that's nice, you know, a nice way to really interact with people without really having to interact too much. Um, so that's where I find, you know, creative storytelling uh, comes in quite a bit. But I would definitely say, find more friends um it sounds kind of against everything as an introvert or like oh you know i don't want to talk with people and i want to be you know to myself but i think we misread um being an introvert with antisocial behavior and so if you really look more at um it from that point of view like all right um that person i may not know them they seem pretty interesting let me find a way to talk to them um, and so I started from simply just saying hi to people in the elevator, um, just opening the door for someone and saying hello. And so I got a little bit more comfortable with actually interacting with people. And then later on, of course, you know, just really building out that group of people that I can always hang with and not feel drained from being around. That's very practical advice. And um, thank you for sharing that because I've definitely seen like small steps like opening the door for someone, saying hi leads on to you being more comfortable um, and that's another question that I had how do you feel about public speaking while being an introvert as well so 
I do a bit of public speaking uh, every year, and um, I can actually take that same mindset. So before each talk that I give, um, I try to get to know some of the conference attendees. And so uh, I'll just kind of, especially if I see them staring at the sign to the room that I'll be in, they are like, oh, hey, you know, what do you think about this topic? And then I let them talk. Um, and then at the end, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm the one that's giving the talk. And then it's more like, oh, for real. And then so they give me that really honest, you know, view of what's going on. And then once we have like that connection, it's like, oh, they can still feel the connection afterward. Um, and then, of course, once the talk is over, I try to, you know, hang around, get to know them, get to know what they're doing uh, any way that I can help them. Um, so that's been one of the things that has helped me. Um, and then before talks, what I used to do uh, would be simply put the camera on and talk in front of it and then just get more comfortable listening to myself. Um, and then from there, you know, it's a matter of, OK, if I'm out in a talk, I'm not going to be worried about it. I already have some friends out in the audience. And then I pick, you know, those people and I kind of like try to hone that message and deliver value to them. I'm glad you mentioned delivering value because this is something that I am all about. Um, how how do you go about making sure that every interaction you have is providing value? No, that's a good question. Um, I think a lot of that is actually taking the time to get to know and care about people. Uh, a lot of our interactions that we have, they're surface, like conversations. Oh, how's the weather? Oh, it's hot today. Oh, yeah, I don't like it. Oh, did you see that TV show? Um, but very few people, you know, take the time to be like, hey, are you really doing OK? Um, or, you know, simply going out of their way to be like, well, you know, I thought about you the other day and I got you this gift. Um, there's so many things that we could do really and truly that it's once you dig past that surface, you find that each relationship, there's something that you can give. So if it's, you know, really good friend um, and they per, you know, for instance, like Iron Man, there are things that, you know, may be unique that you've seen, you know, you can share things. It's not necessarily the cost of what it is that you're giving, um, but the value that, oh, yeah, you actually, you know, think that I mean something that you thought about me and express that. Um, and so each person is a little bit different, um, you know, with your parents, it may just be simply seeing if they're, you know, okay. Um, if you're in a relationship with someone, taking the time to listen to their concerns. Uh, if you make a mistake or, you know, something goes wrong, taking the time to actually apologize and, you know, find a way to move forward and, you know, try to not repeat that situation again. Um, and so there's really a lot of things that you can do to really build the value with a person. Um, I think the hardest part about that has been, you know, dealing with the Always Upward project and meeting new people who I know nothing about and then, you know, trying to get to know them and making sure that, you know, not really drifting away from like the project, but then also making sure that it's delivering value. Um, and so a lot of that aligns with that personal development of how do I deal with, you know, for instance, one question I got recently was how do I deal with periods of inaction um, and then also getting back onto like the creative horse, so to speak. And so, you know, little questions like those, as long as you actually take the time to, you know, ask, hey, what can I do to help you? Um, you would never have uncovered and people would be wondering these things and you're kind of like, yeah, I'm giving all this great value, um, but you never take the time to listen to your audience. Um, and see, you know, is this resonating or what about it, you know, could I have gone deeper on? And so, yeah, it really, really depends. But a lot of it is that personal relationship, getting to know people and actually caring about them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So not just like thinking, what can I get from this interaction? But yeah, like really caring about the person. I'm so glad you mentioned that thing about superficial interaction, because uh, yeah, I, I can't do that. I, it's, it's something that I lose interest very, very quickly. And as soon as I feel that is this, the focus of the conversation, I, I can't be involved. Um, how would you suggest, you know, in the business environment or in creating relationships, how can we get divert away from that superficiality and dive into something that's actually meaningful for both participants? Hmm. Great question. So 
in business, when I meet like new people, the first question that I ask them is, how did you end up where you are now? Um, and you'll usually give me this journey from, you know, like way back when they had this one passion, but then it led to this other thing. And then you start to see the story of, you know, how they unfolded, how, you know, all their different skills come together. Um, and so once you go beyond just like, oh, we're here to talk about you needing a new brand or a new website and go actually into like why, you know, this may be important to them right now on their journey. Um, it gives you a whole lot more room to, you know, provide something to them that they may not have had before. Um, so that's kind of like the approach that I use, you know, all the way across the board. Um, and it works really, really great. I mean, you get to find out, I feel like you get to find out not only about the person, but you also get to find out a little bit about yourself, um, where you are in that journey and, you know, some of the things that you could possibly avoid. Um, cause in that conversation, people tend to share a lot about the things they regret, um, and the things that they wish they would have done differently. And then, you know, everyone thinks that I'm like a teenager. And so they were like, you know, you're so young. If you had like this thing, and I'm like, Hey, I'm almost 30, but, um, that's pretty cool. And so, yeah, it's like, you know, you get a lot of information back that you wouldn't normally receive. And then from there, you're able to kind of like fill in the gaps and provide something for them. Yeah, definitely. I think there's, um, there's something very, um, is that you can cut through a lot of that superficiality if you ask them to open up about themselves. And that's, yeah, you can find common ground there. So thank you for sharing those techniques with us, David. Um, you know, there's there's so much that in in this world that we're living in right now that we could be doing with our time. I want to ask you something very straight up, which is how do you not waste time? Because I see that you do a lot. And, you know, it's e like in my early journey, it was easy for me to sit there in front of the TV, playing video games, whatever it might be. And I see people like yourself and I'm like, wow, Dave is doing x y and z a b and c as well how do i increase my productivity um so the first part of that i would say is like preparation um so a lot of the ideas and things that i'm executing on now um i may have written them down years ago um and then it's kind of like they fill in life has a way of nudging you towards it but once you have kind of like your plan or your thing that you really want to do. So ultimately for me, my thing is philanthropy. And my, I guess, hypotheses that I put against is you don't have to be ridiculously rich to be a philanthropist. Um, you can start with what you have where you are. And so for me, my thing that I can share is my creativity um, and kind of helping people, you know, find their creativity and use it as well. And so in being able to do a lot of these things, now it's like, well, um, it's an evolution of one thing. So example, photography, I'm like, all right, I can do these really cool, you know, black and white pictures on Instagram. Well, what if I took that and created posters out of it? And so, you know, it may be for sale. It may simply just be given away, but it's a curiosity that I kind of want to fill. Um, so I let my curiosity really fill in, you know, the things that I'm going to be doing, but then I have a structure that I'm abiding by. So some days I know, all right, Monday, I'm going to write. Tuesday, I'm going to do, you know, editing in my like free time. Um, and so I think the energy behind it really, really comes from becoming a parent um, and then watching the development of my kid and seeing, you know, the way in which she learns. And I'm like, well, I need to keep up with her. And so it's like that thing that's fueling me because if she's looking up to me as an example, then I don't really want to, you know, sit around and kind of be lazy or do things because especially between, you know, birth and age like four or five, kids learn so much about their, you know, later work habits, the way in which they're processing things and learning things. And so you have to be really, really careful to, um, you know, give them that example because they can't really learn from you telling them hey do this they're more looking at like are you doing that thing um or not and that's you know i feel like that same mindset carries over when you look at whether it's a leader of a business or a community or you know a country it could be 
what is that person doing compared to what are they saying? Um, and so that's the thing that I find that prevents me from being idle. Um, and then going back to my childhood, there was this phrase that my mom would always beat into me and it would be like, the devil gives work to idle hands. And I was like, I don't want to have idle hands. And so, you know, like that thing. And so now I feel like I've developed a little bit of a case of like, you know, being very anxious on some levels where if I sit still for too long, it's like I have to do something Um, or I have an idea that pops into my head and I have to like pull out my phone and like write it down or like if I have my notebook with me, um, you know, I'll write it down there. And so it's like I constantly have to be doing something, um, fidgeting with like whether it's paper or whatnot, being creative. Um, And I think a lot of that has, you know, it comes from a very odd source, I guess, of pain, of knowing that here are the things that I've gone through, um, and creativity was kind of the thing that saved me or pulled me through it. Um, And so now that I really, you know, have all of this creative energy, I guess you can say, where do I direct it towards? Um, And then it builds momentum. You do that one creative thing, and then you end up doing the next creative thing. And then before you know it, you're doing like full blown projects and, you know, everything like that. Um, And it's also important to realize that, you know, even if you don't have a creative background, you still are creative in the way in which you live life. Um, We're all individuals, even if we, you know, may wear the same outfit, same colors, whatever it is, we still have our own unique perspective and thing that we bring to the table. So embrace it and use it. That is really beneficial for me to hear because I do still find myself sometimes thinking, oh, I should have done more or I should be doing something. But I definitely agree the devil does make work for idle hands. Um, I've done too much of his work, so I'm going to start doing more of my own. (laughs) Um, David, you mentioned before that this creativity has helped you so much along your journey. And I would just like to ask you, you know, uh, sharing as much detail as you feel comfortable, what is it particularly about the creativity that has helped you come away from these things that were going on? Hmm. Um, I think it was the ability to really put it into something that I could understand. Um, so breaking it across like the things that I do creatively, um, you know, photography, you know, capturing a moment of whether, you know, happiness or sadness or a perspective of a building um, and being able to say, well, um, here's the thing that was blocking me. You know, I was depressed about this one thing um, or case in point, you know, one morning I was out running and there was this dumpster and it had like broken up, I guess, parts of the road or sidewalk kind of stacked up and it was a, you know, bunch of rocks essentially and I was kind of thinking earlier that morning about you know like how a lot of things in our early childhood will leave us broken later on in life Um, and we may not you know eventually realize it at that moment but eventually as time goes on we realize that oh this is something that is blocking us from being as great as we you know possibly could be And I forgot the exact quote, but, you know, as a picture that I took, I shared, you know, under Always Upward. And that's kind of like the thing that being able to take that one moment and put it into something and say, all right, I'm okay with it. And beyond it, I've found, you know, kind of like the lesson and I'm going to move on. Um, And so for me, a lot of that was, you know, growing up, um, my mom did most of the raising of me, uh, you know, dad wasn't around as often as, you know, a kid would hope that their father would be around. Um, there are other things, bullying, um, of course, being like a really skinny kid in school, it was just kind of like everyone picked on that. And so there are a lot of things that I didn't really deal with then or didn't have access to deal with then that later on in life being able to you know take someone else's story and give it light and see the look on their face when they like you know materialize their idea was something that was like oh this is pretty cool Um, and then as I specialized in um, a portion of life that they call like user experience you know I found that being able to take a user's frustration and build an interface that helps provide a solution, you know, was something that was really, really helpful. 
Um, and then now in business, a lot of that is, well, we have, you know, friends and family and other people that we meet that want to start a business but don't know how. Um, and so we're able to use, you know, our experience the things that we may have learned, the people that we meet, and connect them with, you know, resources that help them throughout that process also. So it's definitely, you know... On the surface, a lot of people look at it as like, oh, you just like to draw or you just like to write or you play on your phone all day. Um, but they may not realize that, you know, the connection that you have to being able to get this artwork out or to get, you know, a website launched or, you know, to get that article or poem or piece or whatever it is that you're creating out into the world, even if it's not like publicly, but out from, you know, your mind is like a really, really huge step and a really amazing thing, because then it frees up space for you to do that next thing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, David, because I, I know I can resonate with so much you've just said. Um, we're coming to the end of our discussion, and to, at this point, I, I'd like to ask the guests for something that's helped them along their journey that they would like to impart on the, on the audience. Hmm so much that I would want to share. Um, I'm going to go with kind of my tagline lately. Um, don't be afraid or don't get tired of creating more good and keep your aim always upward. Um, life will kind of beat you down. It'll throw you obstacle after obstacle. But the greatness that you desire, you have to be prepared to go through the process of refining to get there. Um, and what's important is that no matter what you refuse to give in to the bad, you refuse to give in to the negative, um, what you put out, the good that you put out comes back to you. Um, and as long as you keep your aim upward, you know, it's easy for you to rise above whatever obstacle that you face. So I think I'm going to go with that one. That is such a cool tagline, um, always upward. I, I really do like that. Um, so we've, we've talked a lot about what you do as a creative. Um, what's the best way for people to get hold of you? So virtually most places online, um, you can find me on Medium, Twitter, Instagram at DSMY. Um, you could also find me on YouTube, David Yard, um, and then Facebook, DSMY Creative. Um, and then of course, you know, I'll drop those links for you to share with the audience as well. Um, so yeah, pretty much any one of those places, posting something, um, having fun with it. So yeah. Sure. Um, I would just like to give you a big thank you because I've learned so much today and so much of what you said I'm going to be putting into action. So thank you so much for joining us, David. I hope oh, no, thank you. I hope everyone in the audience has found as much value as I have today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next podcast. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Give me a rating on iTunes as well. Much appreciated. And we'll see you next time. Peace.